Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The Tuchel era is here, and he started off in style with a dominant 4-2 win over Terzic's Dortmund. Where once Bayern went ahead, they were virtually unstoppable. But what exactly made this performance so dominant from Bayern, and why exactly were Tuchel's tactics so effective, particularly in the first half where the game was decided? We'll begin with Bayern in possession. When Dortmund had the ball and lost it, they were aggressive in the counterpress, but that wasn't the case in more settled defence. Instead, they opted to defend in more of a 4-5-1 that would look like this. And Bayern's midfield three rarely remained in this formation. Instead, Kimmich being the deepest pivot, whilst Goretzka and Müller pushed high up into the half spaces, though they had a lot of fluidity with their positioning. But, due to the pace of Bayern's wingers, Dortmund couldn't maintain this shape with a higher backline, which would have allowed them to both cover Kimmich more easily in this position, while not giving the men between the lines too much space. But because they had to be wary of these runs in behind, the backline had to drop slightly deeper. What this now meant is that if Dortmund kept this midfield shape, Kimmich would have had too much space in which to operate, which actually did happen on a few occasions. And as a result, Kimmich ran the game, with the most touches and passes attempted on the pitch. However, Dortmund did anticipate this, so they looked to pick him up, with either Guerrero or Bellingham pushing high up onto him early, although Kimmich could still receive. And with the rest of the midfield, they actually shifted to a much narrower midfield four. So Dortmund's true defensive shape often looked like a 4-4-1-1, with a man looking to pick up Kimmich. And Terzic may have kept Royce and Brandt fairly narrow to begin with, as he was looking to minimise the threat of the men between the half space. How Tuchel used his fullbacks was also quite interesting, and it will be great to monitor how this develops during his tenure. They weren't necessarily dedicated inverted fullbacks throughout the 90, but at the same time, they didn't always look to stay wide. Rather, they were flexible, and their positioning depended on the moment of the game. But for the most part, they stayed deeper and slightly narrower so that the shape looked like this. So, they were often able to receive fairly easily, and this would then draw the narrow winger, and this was disastrous for Dortmund, as it could open up an easy pass to the winger to have a 1 versus 1 with the fullback. And in the wide regions, on both sides, any 1 versus 1 was a clear advantage for Bayern Munich, so this was not ideal and the Bayern wingers could potentially get past their man, or look to drive infield. To make matters worse through the centre, despite having what looked like a fairly straightforward 3 vs 3 in the midfield, Bayern still had ways of getting the advantage, helping them to break the lines in these situations. The first was, as just pointed out, the fullbacks when they did operate slightly narrower. And this is because the narrow positioning of the wingers meant that they were effectively meant to help protect the center. So, by drawing these men out, it would potentially free the pass into a free 8 between the lines, depending on how the game progressed. Here we see one such situation, as Davis and Pavard are in these positions in line with Kimmich. Higher up, you can see that Royce has tucked right in, and his role is to pick up Muller in that position. However, now that Royce is drawn towards Pavard, it is now Guerrero who has to pick up Muller in that higher position. And this helps to free up the pass to Kimmich. And now, Kimmich can find Goretzka between the lines. With Bayern having a 2 vs 1 in this deeper region, Upamecano's role was also important, as he wasn't shy about driving into the midfield whenever he got onto the ball, if he was under no pressure and there were no options higher up and this would subsequently draw a man, either from midfield or out wide towards him, which would then potentially free a man higher up the pitch. Upamakana is actually off the ball in this scenario, but the principle is the same, with him being willing to push into the midfield. He is then able to get onto the ball and can find Goretzka in this dangerous position, where he is then able to spread the play. Dortmund's press from rest defence was also just not great, especially in the first half, because we could see Kimmich initially get onto the ball, and Chan would remain deeper as he was the holder midfielder, but either way, whether it was Guerrero or Bellingham who eventually pressed, there were still plenty of scenarios where the man in between the lines was able to get onto the ball. 
And high up the pitch, we saw Bayern look to overload the centre at times, and Dortmund's fullbacks were often caught defending extremely narrowly. That, paired with the potential of the fullbacks moving infield, would mean that Bayern had plenty of numbers centrally. So, they could work the ball wider to the winger, who could then look for the cross with plenty of his teammates flooding the box. But we also saw the beauty of playing with much more flexible fullbacks, because when the wingers did receive the ball and draw Dortmund's fullbacks, they would be more than willing to go on the overlap to then receive and cross the ball, or if the fullback was drawn towards them, it opened up the room for them to cut in and look to create something dangerous from central zones. And though Bayern were good in possession, their off the ball work was more impressive, though they did also show some weaknesses. Dortmund were looking to build short from goal kicks, with deep split centre backs and the full backs also deep looking to offer an option. And initially, Bayern would defend in a 4 2 3 1, with both wingers remaining fairly narrow, helping to cut out the central options. So once the ball was live, Chupamoting would look to cut that lateral passing option and press one of the centre backs. So what this would now mean is that the obvious pass was to the fullback, where the winger would then look to aggressively press. And neither Wolf nor Ryerson were great in this game, and as a result there were press targets who lost the ball on more than one occasion. And we even see a press like this in action for Bayern's third goal. Dortmund did have more success when they built short down the left hand side, and we could see at times Sane being drawn towards a centre back. But Bayern were aggressive in backing up this press, with Pavard being willing to press the fullback, knowing that Kimmich would cover in behind him, with Goretzka also shifting across. But down the left, Dortmund were also great at overloading this region, with Guerrero and Royce both often coming across to begin that overload. This often created a problem for Bayern Munich, because Upamakano would have to come across to back up this press. And on either side, we saw Dortmund being aggressive with their midfield runners, whether it was Bellingham or Guerrero in different situations. As if Upamakano or De Ligt, if the play was forming on the left hand side, will consistently be making these runs in behind to get on the end of a pass and they got into dangerous situations on more than one occasion. Here we see Royce's positioning draws Upamakana's eye, so now Bellingham sees the opportunity to make the run in behind him, and he receives in a dangerous position with Haller in support, however his touch allows Upamakana to get back. But these shapes could also drag Bayern Munich's entire side across, and Brandt operated wide only on paper, and instead tended to invert narrow extremely early on. Wolf was aggressive in looking to push up the pitch, and on more than one occasion he was able to receive the switch, however couldn't make the most of the space that he was afforded, which wasn't helped by Davis's excellent recovery pace. But these are problems that Tuchel may have to address going forward. And Bayern were excellent on the transition, and we saw some of the disadvantages of playing with traditional fullbacks, as both Ryerson and Wolf would often be caught high up the pitch. At the same time, Emre Chan at times would be isolated as a single pivot if both Guerrero and Bellingham had pushed high. So, whilst both Sane and Coman could defend deeper, they always had one eye on the transition. So, whenever Bayern won the ball, they would either directly look to hit the winger, or first play a transitional pass through the far side midfielder to then find the winger which caused Dortmund all sorts of problems. Overall, Dortmund once again crumbled under the Bayern pressure, but they are still in the title race, but it feels like we've seen this movie before. This was Tuchel's first game, and not everything was perfect, but with Dortmund's error-laden performance, it didn't have to be, so stay tuned to see how Tuchel's tactics evolve. But for the manager tactical scores, Tuchel still excelled, earning an 8, whilst Terzic was unable to react to the game's changing circumstances, earning just a 3. But what are your thoughts? Drop them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you might enjoy the content available on my Patreon. Not only does Patreon help to support the continued production of content, as I am a one-man team, but it also gives you early access to videos that will come on the channel. You'll also get exclusive videos, get to vote on polls, and so much more, and it's cheaper than ever no longer having a tier system, so everyone on the Patreon gets access to all the content. 
So head over to patreon.com slash football made simple to check it out.